In my hands, I have the Canon 5D Mark II, and in today's video, we're gonna check out the best settings for Magic Lantern RAW on this camera. Let's do it. Hey guys, Zeke here. Hope you're all doing well and creating some awesome content with your fantastic cameras. In my hand, I have the 5D Mark II and what we're gonna do is look at the best build and the settings for this camera. Now, a few days ago, I compiled a few modules that were provided by David from Red Deer City and I put them into this build and what you get now is playback in 1080 and 2.8K RAW modes in 10, 12 and 14 bit, which is fantastic. Every shot that you take out in the field, you can finally preview it and check your framing just for reference. And it is choppy a bit, but I mean, it goes through frame by frame. It's not like a compressed video. Uh, it's raw information straight from the sensor. And this is the best that we have for these cameras. All right, so this is the Canon 5D Mark II. And I know that it's clipped on the side over here. I can definitely fix that. But I mean, just for the sake of recording this video, this is what the 5D Mark II looks like. I'm using a Sony ECS3 lavalier mic directly into the Canon 5D Mark II. A few other things to mention is that dual ISO is working fine. There's no flickering or color shifts. So that's good news. And also we get an increase of resolution. So 1856 now becomes 1880. So we're getting closer to 1920 by 1080. You're getting extra pixels and just that extra little bit of detail. Now I know that some of you wanna shoot 140th of a shutter. You wanna to stick to the 180 degree rule. And to enable that on this camera, what you gotta do is enable FPS override. So once you've enabled that, you're gonna get 140th of a shutter in the 1080 mode. Now if you're gonna shoot 2.8K raw, FPS override doesn't work in that mode. So just keep away from that. All right, so what card would I recommend for Magic Lantern RAW? Uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro, the 64 gig or the 128 gig, 160 megabytes per second. That card has been extremely reliable. I've had no issues whatsoever. And it's just provided consistent results on the 5D Mark II. Now as for lens choice, I recommend the Canon STM 51.8 or some vintage glass, which come really cheap, like the Nikkor 50mm f1.8 AI lens. Absolutely love that lens. It looks small on the body, it's light. Manual focus is easy thanks to the smooth focus. Now, if you want to shoot 2.8K RAW, that has a two times crop factor. So you might want to consider your lens choice. Over here, I have the Canon 10 to 18 mil and it's been modified with an EF mount so I can fit it onto my full frame cameras. It's a wide angle lens. It's got stabilization and it just produces really nice color and it's just a joy to work with out in the field. All right, so before we get into the settings, I just want to share with you guys some RAW footage that I captured 2.8K resolution on the 5D Mark II and Magic Lantern RAW. Here it is. All right guys, so here I have the Canon 5D Mark II and I've intentionally set it to 800 ISO so you guys can just see the screen. Now all your information is down here. So you got three by three binning mode. I'm shooting at 15 mil with stabilization, my aperture, my shutter, ISO, and then my picture profile. So all the information is down there if you need. Uh, you can also monitor sound through these bars. All right, so to enter the Magic Lantern menu, just hold down the trash can button 
and then if we go all the way down to the bottom you can see that raw video has been set to 1880 by 1058 so as I was saying before that this was 1856 and now it's 1880 and if you press the picture profile button over here you can access the raw video sub tab so this is where you can change your aspect ratio you know you got all these different aspects ratios that you can check so 2 to 1 1 to 85, 4 by 3, whichever one's suitable for your shoot, that's one you choose, and I just typically set it at 16 by 9. Over here is bit depth, so this is just how much color information you want to capture. Now I've tested all three of these, and there's not much disparity between them, so 14 bit will give you more data sampling rates, and you know, the lower you choose, the lower data rate it'll be. 10 bit is absolutely fine, that's what I shot the 2.8K raw video before with, and 10 or 12 bit will get you continuous recording in this mode. So at the first tab we have audio gain, you want your MLV sound to be on and then you can adjust these according to what mics you're using. So in the next tab, this is your exposure tab. This is where you control white balance, ISO, shutter, aperture. For white balance, it doesn't really matter because it's raw footage, you can play around with that in post. Uh, but if you want to keep it clean, just set it to whatever you need to. For ISO, I keep it at 100 ISO. If you want to bump it up, just go in increments of 160, 320 and so forth. And then down here, picture style. Now, you can see that I've set my sharpness to 7. That's just to help me clarify focus. When you actually place the files in the MLV app, this sharpness over here will have no effect at all. So, just use the sharpness as a focusing tool. If you go over here, this is the overlay tab. So, zebras, if you enable that, I've set mine to 100. Press the picture profile. And then you can see that we have 100% zebras. And then we go back. Focus peak doesn't really work that well. It looks a bit, I don't know, clunky. All right, then we have magic zoom. This is just to help us clarify our focus. So press the picture profile button, trigger mode. Now you can use all these things to trigger your focus. I like half shutter or always on. And I'll just select that for now. What size do you want it? And then position top left to magnification three to one. And let's go ahead and check that out. So at the top here, you have your magnification and you can set your focus that way. And it will just go green when it's clarified the focus for you. All right, for now, I'll just keep that off. Then you have your crop marks, spot meter, false color. If you turn that on, you can see they have all these different colors. Red just means you've clipped the highlights and you won't be able to recover them. Blue just means you've crossed the shadows and you're gonna get a lot of noise there. So you can adjust your exposure settings according to how you want them and then fix this all up. Press the trash can and then you can disable that histogram. That's gonna help you through exposure and you wanna enable that. You wanna enable scaling linear. If you want to check your dynamic range, just change ETTI hint to dynamic range and that will show you your dynamic range that you're capturing. Then you have waveform, vector scopes, and then we'll go to the movie tab. So here it is, and you've got FPS override. So if you enable that, and then half press the shutter, you'll see that you have 148th of a shutter, which is pretty much the 180 degree rule. Press the trash can again, and then the picture style button. And it says desired FPS, so I can change from 24 frames per second to 23.976 or 23. And then optimized for, you can have low light or high FPS. Just select exact FPS and I'll keep that at 24. Now just remember when you're in 2.8K mode, don't enable FPS override. So for now, I'm just going to have it off. Now here you have your crop mode, so if you enable that, you can enter 3.5K 1 to 1 centered or the 4K anamorphic or the 48P. Honestly, I've tried these, I don't really like them. I just stick with the one-to-one -one centered times five. So down here, it says to enable that, you need to enable times five zoom. And the way that you enable 2.8K raw mode is by clicking this magnification button. And there you go, 2.8K raw is enabled and you can see that it's a pink live view, but that's the best we have. And it's working really, really fine. You can see that it's not choppy or anything. You get really nice motion in this mode. So once we're in this mode, just press the trash can button. And then you can see raw video down here has been set. So press the picture profile button. Towards the top, you can see that it's an aspect ratio of 2.40 to 1. So you're going to get like crop bars on the top, which looks very cinematic. And then if you reduce the resolution, it shows you your aspect ratio is changing. All right guys, so there we have it. 16 by nine is at a resolution of 2048 by 1152. So this is around 2K raw and you can see 2.74 times of a crop factor. So this is close to super 16, which is really fantastic if you wanna get that look and then set your bit depth to 10 bits so you get longer record time. Now over here, you can always change your aspect ratio if you need. And then there you go, 16 by nine, 2.74 times crop. And then to go back to the 1080 mode, all you do is double press the menu button. 
and there you go, you're back at the 1080 mode. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the raw video side. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other tabs. In the display tab, enable LV digit peaking, and that will help you clarify focus. It just helps sharpen a few of the objects and just it's like pretty much like sharpening picture profile and it just really helps it's a better alternative to focus peaking down here you have your anamorphic settings and then over down here you can clear overlays so if you're doing you know webcam and stuff like that you can set it to always or recording so if you do recording go out of here and then press the set button and you'll see everything disappears from the live view and then everything reappears again so press the play button and there you go exactly what i've recorded and I'll show you all the information down over here so what resolution I've got and the bit depth as well as how many total frames I've captured. For my needs, I'm going to leave clear overlays to off. In the prefs option, you have this awesome setting down here which is power save and live view and then you've got LV display presets. So you have one live view but with LV presets you have more than one so you can have up to two to three to four LV presets. So if I select two, all I have to do is go over here to my overlays and then you can see that I have Zebra to set to 100. Now if I go back and press the info button, you can see that there are no more Zebras because now we've entered Live View number two. So for Live View number two, you can pretty much set your own settings in that mode or your overlays. So for example, in Live View two, all I want is false color. Enable that and then Live View two is false color. Then press the info button to go back to Live View one. And these are the presets I have in Live View one. Go back to Live View two and then I have false color set. And if I want to disable that in live view 2, then all I do is hit the trash can, disable that, and then it's back to normal. So nothing there, and then back to live view number 1, and these are my presets, all enabled. Now if you want dual ISO up and running, all you go is down here to the exposure tab, dual ISO, enable that. Now you can see that I have my settings set to 800 slash 800. Ideally you want 100 slash 800, and so you can go over to the top here, and then select 800, and then bring it down to... 100 so then you get 100 slash 800 and then here you have your exposure value you can see that it's towards the bottom what you want is exposure value 1 and 0 0.1 0 0.1 is closer to exposure to the right and then obviously going back you're going to get darker and darker so just make sure you have a good exposure value and then over here on the right we can see that we've added plus 2.5 stops of dynamic range which is fantastic and then just disable that. If you're using MLV up, you can enable dual ISO on that and that will fix everything for you. All right, so that's pretty much all the settings that I use on the Canon 5D Mark II. And just make sure that you have all these modules enabled. Go ahead and have some fun and I'll see you guys next time. So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this video. Hopefully it's helped you out in some way. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.